I'm an assistant city manager. If you know how that works, that means I'm the chief operating officer, which means I'm in the middle of everything. I get the pressure from the mayors. I have expectations from the departments. The public calls me up and says, why don't things work? Why are the potholes there? And my role in life is to try and keep everybody happy. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Wi-Fi has been one of those win-win, I think, situations for all of us. Let me tell you what we were looking for, or what the Anaheim model is. We're doing a straight pay for real estate, pay for power, pay for access type model. It's a very market-driven business approach. When the city council challenged staff to put together a Wi-Fi approach, they said, we want a straight business approach. We don't want to subsidize anybody. We just want an alternative. We want choice. We want another way for people to gain broadband access. Mr. Wood, don't try and extort anything from those private companies. We're going to pay for it. At the time, I thought it was a bad idea, but in hindsight, it worked out rather well because it kept everything on a very business basis. Fortunately, we own all of our utility poles all of our street light poles, so it simplified the issue. We provide our own electricity, so what we did, put out an RFP about a year ago, Earthlink was a successful uh, provider. They pay a pole attachment fee per month. They pay a metered rate for each of the devices they're installing. If they put up more devices, they pay more attachment fees, and they pay a larger uh, monthly rate, if you will, for electricity. Equally, from user's perspective, um, if the police department, fire department, or anybody else wants licenses, uh, we have negotiated uh, with Earthlink, albeit at a slightly reduced fee, uh, a straight charge uh, per licensed user. Once again, it keeps on a very business approach. What were the parties seeking? What pressures did I have as being in the middle from the different uh, parties involved? We have a very dynamic, City Council and Mayor. They wanted access alternatives. We had a Adelphia Time Warner cable system, AT&T phone system. To keep everybody honest, they said, let's bring another user in for broadband um, access that will keep price down and quality up, keep everyone honest. So they wanted access alternatives. They wanted competition to control costs and quality. That was where the direction from our electives. We have a very large tourism business. We host something over 20 million people a year uh, at the Disney properties, at our sports venues, uh, at our convention center. Have you ever gone to convention these days and not taken your laptop and not had the expectation that as you move from the convention floor to your hotel to a restaurant that you wouldn't have access to the internet? Clearly, the tourism industry said to stay competitive, this is another service we need to provide. From our user departments, user departments, it was great to have access, if you will, to your CAD systems and so on and so forth, but they did not have in the field broadband access. They could not get into the blueprints. They could not get into their legacy, if you will, uh, network systems. They wanted direct access to all of their network so the employee did not have to come into the office. So they could go straight from their home to the field and go from job site to job site, get full access to all of the systems that we had. That's what they expected. And finally, from Earthlink, from the selected vendor, they wanted rapid deployment. They wanted to be quickly able to deploy a system, ease the market, if you will, so they could start making money. Those are the demands that we were faced with. That's what everyone's expectation was for, and that is the model that we have gone forward with. What have we learned from all this? We are now into our fourth month of deployment. We're a city of 50 square miles, 110,000 residential uh, units, 350,000 some odd folks. Uh, we're 10 square miles hot. Another 10 square miles comes online in about two weeks. The balance of the system will go live within three months. Issues that we learn going forward. Getting high ground for the backhaul is still an issue. Yes, having access to street lights and power is wonderful, but you still need those point of connections, if you will, back to your the internet. Now, for Earthlink to negotiate with the tall buildings in town or on top of water tanks, 
is still an issue because those parties negotiate hard deals and they aren't nearly as fast as government. I know private sector is supposed to be fast, but we're much faster than people who own real estate on top of tall buildings. So if there's any way you can work through that one in advance, that is a real advantage uh, to whoever your service provider is coming in. Two, on the street issues. What we found, and it was briefly alluded to earlier, the installation on streetlight poles is not as easy as it sounds. You're going to block a street. It may be a major arterial. You have insurance issues. You've got to have cone patterns. You have to have adequate flashing lights. Citizens don't like people hanging stuff up in the middle of the night. They like it done from you know, 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. It doesn't disrupt them and doesn't make any noise. These are issues that you have to work through with your service provider. They think they can do it anytime, day or night, put up a, you know, a, a ladder and bingo bang, it will happen in the back of a pickup truck. Doesn't work. You have to educate them as to the risks and problems of dealing in the public right of way. We found that the most important thing we did in rolling this thing out is having weekly meetings with our service provider, rolling these, simply awarding a contract, awarding a franchise and saying go forth and make it happen is you, you could be disastrous because issues come up, things fester, and if you don't have an ongoing dialogue where your public works people, your or service provider, your management are sitting down <coughs> making sure all the issues are resolved, you're gonna have problems. Those weekly meetings have proven invaluable. And finally, an issue that I thought was going to be a major concern was that of aesthetics. One of the mayors made the comment about the, the device that you saw out in the hallway. We have had a huge effort over the years of removing all those ugly things, overhead power lines, uh, beautifying uh, mediums, putting up trees, landscaping, and the aesthetic police of the city in our planning department were absolutely convinced that the addition of these new antennas was going to be a huge lighting influence and there was going to be marches on City Hall wanting to throw us all out. The good news I can report is no one knows they're there. If you ask someone, have you seen those antennas? I, I don't think any of my public has a clue of what those things are. They blend into the background, and this has been an extremely pleasant surprise. It has worked out well and not been a problem, and at the same time, uh, we're getting the service that we saw. That's our, where we stand. I'll be happy to answer any questions, uh, but so much of what our stories are so very similar about how this is rolling out. Um, it's an exciting time, and it's one where I think uh, we're adding a real additional service and benefit to our public. So if you have any questions. Yes, sir. Your contract with Earthlink is exclusive, meaning no other providers can come in and, and utilize empty poles and put up competing services. That is correct. We thought, um, and you know, you never know. I think it's going to be fascinating. We've got to hold one of these in about five or ten years. You can go back and see if we were all right. Our bet was that if we did not provide an exclusive, and we only provide an exclusive to one piece of real estate, and that street light holds. We were concerned that um, from a business model, uh, they couldn't make it financially. So we said to put something up. We had to put up an agreement that said, you get the exclusive right to this piece of real estate and nobody else does. So that was the, the bet that we made. Yes, sir. I'm kind of curious, from your experience as well as other from areas, is how strong a resistance did you, did you get from other providers, cable, telephone, wireless telephone, and how did you overcome that? It was fascinating. We sent the RFP to everybody. I mean, AT&T, SBC, cable, Time Warner, the world, because I didn't want to be accused of not letting everyone know what was going on, level playing field, everyone can play. We actually got letters from the cable company from AT&T said, thank you very much. We appreciated getting your RFP, but we're just not interested. That's not our business model. I thought that was great. I kept those letters in the file. After we awarded it to Earthlink, I got a call from AT&T, their chief lobbyist in Sacramento, all upset. How could we do this? You know? And I said, well, I've got this letter here from AT&T. Don't you? Left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, obviously. Um, and as soon as they figured out they'd screwed up, they backed away and weren't an issue. <laughs> I guess I was lucky. 